Today's lesson is going to be fusi fusing two photographs together in the style of John Stavaker. Most of you have researched his work. Um, he would use magazines and books and he usually, usually used sort of Hollywood icons and he would splice them and overlap them and sort of join them together to make sort of hybrid images. Some of them are quite comical. Um, some of them were male and females joined together, which I'm going to show you today. In fact, it's going to be a father and a daughter. So when you're thinking about John Stazaka's work, you're thinking of sort of comedy initially. But then once you've had a go at experimenting with his style, you might develop further ideas yourself. So initially, we are just copying his style, but using your own photographs. And then that might lead on to further experiments that you decide to choose on. So we have got the final image here, and two of them fused together. They were taken from this photograph. So it's up to you um, how you choose your starting point. It might be two separate photographs that you fuse together, or it might be two people that are in the same photograph, which is a little bit more confusing. So I'm going to show you this way so that you, you know how to do this if you want to. So I've got my photograph. I'm now going to select um, both of the faces separately. Checking up here that my feather's on zero because I don't want a blurred edge. I want it to be cut out nicely. And I'm going to right click and go to layer via copy. And you can see here layer three's popped up. And um, this is two that I did earlier. So you can see what it will look like eventually. So if I go through that again, I don't need these two layers now. So I can just, to make it less confusing, I'm going to stick it in the recycling bin and let's pop that in the dustbin as well. So we've got John's head cut out. We now need to go back to our original layer and we're going to cut out Sophia's face as well. So I need to make sure I'm on the right layer. If I try and cut out on this layer, if that's highlighted in blue, I'm going to be cutting out a blank space. So it must be on the background layer. So right click, layer via copy. OK, along with my demonstration, you've got the John Stazaka step by step guide. So you can have this playing while you're working and you can have the step by step guide to look at as well. So on the step by step guide, it will say to you, you need to make sure that your images are 300 dots per inch. So when you initially open up your two photographs, you should notice or you should not notice, but you should check um, the image size. So you go to image, image size, and it is the resolution is 300 dots per inch. So we're fine. Any less than that, it just means that you can't print the photograph out A4 size. And if you do print it out A4 size, it will be incredibly blurred and pixelated. So it needs to be 300 dots per inch. There's nothing worse than doing a really long experiment and coming up with an image that you're really proud of and then realizing the resolution is say 72 and you're not gonna be able to print it any bigger than sort of 10 centimeters by five centimeters. Um, because any bigger than that, it will be blurred. So always check as a general rule that your, your photographs are 300 dots per inch. So we'll click OK on that. We know we're all right. They're going to be nice and clear. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is open up a new canvas. It's getting a bit confusing over here. Um, so I'm just going to open up a new canvas and drag my two new faces separately cut out. If I go to the move tool, you can see they are on separate layers. Um, and we're going to start the process of fusing them together. So I'm going to go to File, New. It suggests on the worksheet that it needs to be A4 size. So that is 21 centimetres across. And the height is 29. And the resolution, if you remember, needs to be... 300. That's our canvas all set up. I'm just going to move that across so you can see it properly. And I'm going to drag our two pictures across. 
So let's go to here. And um, the two ways of doing this, you can click on the layer. So layer four is highlighted. So let's do that first. And left click and drag. Or you can go to go back to the original canvas. You can go to the picture itself. If I click on the right one. Yeah, the right one. And you could go make sure you're on the move tool in your toolbar here and click and drag it across from the canvas. It does exactly the same thing, just two different ways of doing it. They're both on, on my canvas now. The next thing I need to do is move them around and get them sort of lining up and merging on top of each other. So the best thing to do is choose one photograph to be the background and one photograph to be sort of cut into. So if I have John in the background, let's get him underneath. Let's move Sophia to the left. And I'm going to go to show transform controls. So I've got my little boxes around the edge of the photograph. And always remember when you're making an image bigger or smaller, you hold down shift and um, so it doesn't become distorted. So I'm holding down shift, I'm left clicking and I'm dragging. You obviously can't see that I'm holding down shift because you can't see the keyboard, but I am. So it's staying in proportion, it's not going sort of too thin or too fat. So that's a bit bigger and we'll move that across because that's going to be on the right hand side. If I refer to my original example there, John's in the background on the right hand side. So now I need to line up Sophia on top. So if I double click, transformed, I'm going to click on Sophia's layer now move her and again make her approximately the right size i need to change her angle slightly she's leaning over to the right so i need to change the angle but it's a little bit hard to get it exactly right without seeing the picture underneath so what we'll do is we'll change the opacity down to about 50 percent there we go Ooh, that's quite a scary sight, but you can see the two faces starting to line up and merge together. So I need to rotate her Let's move so we can see what we're doing. Let's make that canvas a bit bigger. So if I rotate her around clockwise, the eyes are level now. Her face is still a little bit small, so we can hold down shift, left click, and drag the edges out so it's it's making her bigger. Oh, it does look a bit scary. Tiny bit bigger. So the trick is for these mergers to work is to get the nose lined up, the eyes lined up and the mouth you know, the nose, eyes and mouth lined up. So the key facial features. So let's leave that there for now. That's fairly convincing. Merged. I've double clicked, it's transforming. And I'm going to turn her up again to full opacity. Now I can decide where I want to cut. So I could cut her, it sounds a bit brutal, I could cut her diagonally, I could cut her horizontally or vertically but looking at John Stazaka's work most of the images have a sort of diagonal cut through the middle so I'm going to go to my polygonal lasso tool polygonal lasso tool where's my image gone there we go Let's go to history. It's done something a bit strange. Ah, I can see what's happened. So it's really handy to have the history open. Um, if something goes a bit strange in the middle of your experiment, you can see exactly what you've done. And I've accidentally changed the opacity, so I've made her completely see through. So if I go back to my layer one, here we go. I can change the opacity up. 
there she is again. Yeah, so accidentally slipped. So if Photoshop suddenly goes wrong and you're thinking, what have I done? First of all, check you're on the right layer. Sometimes that can be a reason why something isn't working. And secondly, go into your history and it tells you what you've done. So without realizing it, I changed the opacity there. Okay, problem solved. So we're going to go to our polygonal lasso tool now. We've got her face back. So here it is. Just behind the lasso tool, there we go. Got a drop down menu there, and there's a polygonal lasso too. Perfect. Um, I'm not going to feather this. If you look at John Stazak's work, it's just a cut sort of line. After you've tried working in his style, you might decide that you want the faces to merge a bit more in the middle so it's a bit more subtle and you don't have the sort of cut line between the two pictures. Um, then you can have a go with the feather tool. I'll show you both, um, but for this experiment, I'm working in his style. So We'll keep it with the um, the zero feathering. I'm going to click the diagonally all the way through. Select a bit of the photograph that I want. So now I can press Control on the bottom left of the keyboard and J, and that's going to copy that selection. You can see here it's formed a layer three. So if I turn out the eye off on layer one. You can see my my um, my new selection. So she's not quite lined up. So let's move her across a bit. Rotate her a bit and join her a bit better. There we go. That's quite a scary sight, but it's a little bit more fused. I might change it slightly because she's got a lot less nose than John. So I'm going to go back to my history. And I'm going to go back past the polygonal lasso tool because I'm going to change my selection. And I'm going to try that again. So polygonal lasso tool. And I'm going to make sure I've got at least half of her nose. Perfect. That's better. So I've got my selection. I'm going to press Control, J. There she is, layer three. We'll close the eye on layer one. That's much better. We've got sort of an equal amount of their faces now, half and half. So let's tweak that and line her up a little bit better. I'm happy with that. Okay, the next thing you'll notice, um, well, the next thing I need to do is crop around the two images. You can see where the photographs have been cut out and where they've been moved. So to make it a bit neater and to make it a nice rectangle shape, I'm going to crop around and get rid of the um, uneven edges. Another thing you'll notice about Stozaka's work is that his work is black and white, as you can see from my example, which seems to have disappeared. There it is, right at the back. So what I'm going to do now is go to image, adjustment, and desaturate. Oh, I'm on the wrong canvas. There we go. That's getting confusing. I've desaturated him on the, on the wrong canvas. Let's minimize that one and try again. OK. Image, adjustments, and desaturate. That's better. And then on my layer three, again, image, adjustments, and we could just click black and white on this one. So desaturate and black and white do the same thing. And to finish off, I'm going to merge the two photographs together so they form one layer and then play around with the levels. So there's more contrast between the dark and the light areas and my portrait will really stand out. But before I do that, I'm going to show you the difference between having zero feathering with my poly polygonal lasso tool and having sort of a higher number. The higher the number, the more blurred the outline will be. So if we go for 
let's say 50. And I go just over that line that I cut out when I was cutting Sophia's face in half. I'm just going to select that edge. So you can see clearly, I'll just turn the eye off on John's face there so you can't see him. So that edge there is going to be cut out, but it should be, you can see it's a dead straight line that there. It should be really sort of fluffy because I've feathered, feathered it now by 50. So if I press delete, you can see the edge is a lot softer. If I turn John's layer back on again, they're merging together a little bit more. Actually, to make that more effective, I'll need to move her across. And you can see that the sort of join between their faces is a bit smoother. Um, but that would be for sort of further experimentation. So you do your experiment in the style of John Stazaka, um, print screen or snip that as step one. And then you'd move on to try all sorts of different things and adding your own twist to the, um, the photographer's work who has inspired you. So we'll go back on the history to our original image. Perfect. And what we're going to do now is merge the two photographs together. So let's put them beside each other. I'll change the order there. And I'm going to turn off the eyes on the ones that I don't want. I'm going to click on John's layer there and right click and choose Merge, merge Visible. So it's choosing um, the layers that have got the eyes open. These two underneath won't form part of the merger. So right click, Merge Visible. So now you can see they are one layer. And I can now go into my image adjustments and levels and make the light tones lighter and the dark tones slightly darker, so my image has a bit more impact. And there we have it, my John Stazaka style fusion. So over to you now, have some fun with your own photographs. And once you've tried working his style, um, have a go at adding your own twists and your own tweaks and your own ideas um, to this form of, sort of slicing and, and fusing photographs together. Good luck. I look forward to seeing how you get on.